What is up guys? Zach in here and in today's video I want to give you my full 2023 guide for wholesaling real estate part-time. So if you want to start wholesaling houses part-time, you know, a lot of people watching this video right now, you know, they, they don't work 40, 50, 60 hours a week in wholesaling, right? They might put 5, 10, 15 hours in this business. And honestly, that is all you need, right? And the reason why I talk about wholesaling houses part-time and why I'm dedicating an entire video uh, for this today is because I feel like so many people like myself, this is how we got our start, right? Uh, my dad, Rick, right? He got his first start at literally working a full-time job wholesaling on the side. I was the same way, right? Like I was in high school, I was doing classes, wrestling, I was a bag boy, I was doing a bunch of stuff and I started wholesaling on the side. The true thing is you have to understand that when you're wholesaling real estate, you can do this all as like a side hustle or as a side thing, right? Like obviously it is full-time income times a million for me for wholesaling real estate. But like when you really look at wholesaling houses, if you do a couple deals a month working five, 10 hours a week, just on the side, right? A lot of people can find 10 hours, right? For most people, 20 is probably the best bet, like I've said, uh, but honestly, you could switch things up, right? And really you could start getting a $10,000 deal and a $15,000 deal and a $20,000 deal and start doing one every single month and then two and then boom, it's like, why am I even working a regular job? And that's the point. So in today's video, I want to talk to the part-time wholesalers uh, getting into 2023 and really share with them exactly my best strategies, the best list, the, the best methods you have to understand about really using your time correctly and the best way. So that's what I want to do today, guys. That's why I'm jacked up. Up. I'm excited to share with you guys, and I know I'm going to change somebody's life today. And that is the point. That is what I want to do. That is what I'm ready to share. So, without further ado, do me a big favor, guys. Make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. So, everyone watching this, smash that like button, hit that subscribe, and make sure you turn the bell notifications on so you don't miss when I go live, guys. You, you know, I go live different times and times, but uh, comp all your questions, and I'm always going to be here to help you become the best wholesaler possible. But with wholesaling real estate part time, we are, we are wholesaling houses part-time. How does this work? How do we do it? And what are the methods, the operations, everything we need to know so we can start doing this? So uh, let's break it all down and let's really share everything you need to know about this. So before we get into wholesaling houses part-time, we got to know exactly what the wholesaling real estate process is. And really, I I'm assuming you are sort of brand new and you're coming to me and you're looking for an action plan or a plan of attack. So we know exactly how to get started in wholesaling part-time, right? Like, what do I do all day, right? Like, what is the point? What are we doing? What do I have to do, right? So let's sort of break it down to basics, right? And let's let's really make this super easy, uh, super simple for most people. And let's make it really basic, right? Let's talk about here the wholesaling real estate process. So right here, guys and gals, is the wholesaling process. Uh, pretty much, uh, without further ado, it, it's very simple, right? But really, it's marketing, locking up a deal, finding the buyer, walking them through, and then closing the deal, right? Like for the majority of wholesaling real estate, that is what the process is. There's no need to sugarcoat it or make it worse or crazier than it needs to be. But really that, that is the wholesaling process, right? So marketing going out here, finding people that want to sell the property, locking up the property under contract, right? And then usually if you're doing virtual, maybe take pictures of the property, right? Uh, you know, day 14 to 18, if we're doing a deal in 30 days, we're going to find the end buyer, the cash buyer, the rich landlord house flipper. They're going to buy the contract from us uh, for a profit. And then we're going to walk through the deal, right? That, that's the next part. You walk the cash buyer through the deal. We close, we get our check. Pete. That is our wholesaling process, uh, really when it comes to going actually out here and wholesaling a deal, right? And I think a lot of people get really confused on this, but really that is the process. And that is what we got to do part-time, not full-time. So the big question here is what is wholesaling part-time? How many hours per week is this? What was the definition? What constitutes a part-time wholesaler? In my personal opinion, I have found that 20 hours a week uh, makes somebody a part-time wholesaler. So I found if you're putting at least 20 hours a week into this business, uh, you can consider pretty much part-time. And we have a lot of actually different ways around it, right? We have part-time and we have part-part-time, right? And there's a lot of differences and intricacies on part-time wholesaling and part-part-time and all these things. But really, I found part-part-time to be five hours and then part-time to be um, at least 20, right? Put 10 hours in there too. That, that could definitely be part-part-time too honestly up to which one you want to do, but like they're all over the board, right? So there's no one definition of it, right? So in wholesaling real estate, we got to understand that our highest priority, right? Our highest priority right now 
is getting the most out of our time. Because we are wholesaling real estate part-time and we're not being able to put 40, 50, 60 hours a week like some other wholesalers are, we're gonna have to get the best out of our time. So the point here is we are going to want to make at least the work of a 40 hour a week wholesaler into the, into 20 hours, okay? So point here is we're gonna make 20 hours a week of work way more productive than the average wholesaler that spends 20 hours doing it, right? That is the point of wholesaling real estate part-time. We're going to, in this method, find better quality sellers less time. That is the point. We are going to spend less time and we're going to start dealing with more quality sellers. So we got really two ways of wholesaling. If you're really looking at it part-time, we have two main ways. We have ways where we have no money at all. And then we go out here and we have ways where we have some money, right? We're like which way is the way to go, right? Honestly, I could care less if you have money or not in wholesaling, right? I care more about your effort, what you're doing. But uh, really, when you look at it, there's two ways. If you have money and you have no money, right? So no money, like when you say no money, I think like legit, you got no money, like zero dollars in your bank account. You want to start wholesaling, but you work a full-time job, you're paycheck to paycheck. You can still do it. These are definitely ways you can. So let's break down these type of ways, right? Number one, we, this is going to be the cold calling the government lists. Uh, pretty simple guys, right? Like just these are lists you can get from the government apps free probates, tax liens, other type of liens, pre foreclosure leads, actually. So uh, then you can go in the water shutoff, fire damage property, probates, you go on and on forever. Uh, but the government lists are absolutely amazing. Then there's some really niche ones out here too. But honestly, for most people, uh, I think the government list is probably going to be your best bet. I think government lists are still extremely underrated and definitely something I highly recommend. So uh, work on the government list, guys and gals. I think it's a huge one. And remember, in the bottom right hand quarter, freewholesaling.com. We really break it all down, right? So uh, cold calling Zillow for sale by owners is another one. It's a free method. Uh, it's definitely one I highly recommend still. Uh, but really, cold calling Fizbo's, I talk about forever, freehostling.com. We really break it down. It's a free way, no skip tracing, no hassle, no overcomplicating things. That's why I love Zillow for sale by owners. And a lot of these sellers are okay with you making low ball offers. Number three here, JVing or joint venturing with other wholesalers. Now, this might be the least sexiest way uh, to start wholesaling part-time, but it's definitely still a method that works really well and definitely something I still highly recommend for people. JV with other wholesalers. I'm telling you, we teach you at freelancing.com how to do it. It's an absolute amazing way to be going. Now, if you have some money, right now, some money is better than no money, right? And the reason why is because some money can make your, you just make your time go a little better, right? So if I'm working 20 hours a week and I got to dig holes, right? I remember that Shia LaBeouf movie uh, where the guy's just digging holes and they have the whole mystery Western treasure and stuff. It was, it was always a funny, but like, can you imagine how do you do that without a shovel? That'd be insane. But like, it's me digging holes with a shovel versus with a plastic beach shovel, right? It just, it makes it easier. It's a tool. The money will make it a tool. We'll make you a better wholesaler, better person, but it's just a tool, right? So I'm still going to cold call government list. Maybe you add some paid skip tracing in there, right? Eh, it, like you can't do whatever you want. You could add in some list REI.com lists. I'm not telling you to add blanket all of them, but there are some prop stream lists that I probably would be adding onto this uh, when you've got some money for it because it just, it makes complete sense, right? Like, so I am I would probably do like a tired landlord list or heck, you can do water shut offs. You can't find them. You get some liens in there. I'd go tired landlords, vacant with high equity. Like it just, there's some prop stream lists when you're starting out, when you're part-time, it's not the best one, but uh, it, it's more rare than not, right? Uh, reverse drying for dollars and drying for dollars. That's just getting in your car, looking for ugly looking houses. Reverse drying for dollars is really when we actually go out here and we have those yellow sticky notes. I actually like this method. I, I, I tell everyone that's probably going to be the best methods now because it's absolutely cheap. It is borderline free. If you're really looking now, the gas is going to cost some money, but really when you're reverse drying for dollars, I don't think you can go wrong with it. And really, because it's like direct mail, except it's better. Your response rates are insane. And I go on and on why I love reverse drying for dollars. I go to freelancing.com if you don't know what reverse trying for dollars, but for most people watching this live stream, they actually know, so that's fine. Uh, but really the next part here is just also drawing for dollars and cold calling that list. It's a deadly combo. A lot of people are getting deals. And uh, we, at the end of this, we actually have some people in our uh, Facebook group that are actually getting a lot of deals from it. And they were finishing off the challenge, uh, finally getting those checks. So I want to highlight those people too. Probate mailers. I would probably start looking into investing in some probate mailers right now. I think probate mailers is still going to be one of the top strategies uh, coming into 2023 because a lot of wholesalers have just stopped doing it. And 
a lot of wholesalers just don't want to pay the money for it. But really, I think it's one of the best bang for your bucks. Now, it's not that I'm not telling you to do mailers for everything, but heck, it, it, it's not a bad one. And I'll tell you that straight up. It, it's really not a bad one. Now, next one is SMS text blasting. That is probably one of the most expensive ones on this list, but I do want to include it is in there because it's not as expensive as direct mail. We're having this crazy big VA team or anything like this, guys. I just, it's not like that. So I, I'd probably... You can do some SMS text blasting. Just make sure you know what you're doing. That's why I go to freelancing.com and show you actually how to do it the right way, the best, right? So the next part here is a very important lesson I want people to understand, okay? And this is the person that consistently makes calls and offers win. And what I mean by this, the person that can consistently make more calls and more offers will win out. So if you look at your competition, you look at other wholesalers, you really look at the wholesaling industry, right? If you really want to look at everything from a macro perspective, and you want to look at the people that are making a lot of money and the people that aren't making a lot of money in this business, I've always found that the ones that make more calls and make more offers always went out. So that being said, if I'm looking at wholesaling real estate as that same thing, if I can make more offers to motivated sellers and make more calls, I'm going to do more deals, right? And that's pretty much the gist of the conversation, right? And it really comes down to a pretty simple, small set of things, right? Number one, more marketing equals more deals. Might seem like a revolutionary concept, but it's absolutely true. More marketing, more deal. More, sorry, more marketing, more leads. More leads, more offers. More offers, more buyers, more buyers, more to sell to. And that equals more wholesaling deals, which equals to more money. So so it is what we call an upward spiral. And we've been talking about this concept for a little bit here on the channel, uh, but it's absolutely one of the best concepts you can think of. Everybody knows what a downward spiral is, right? You start doing bad things, you lose your job, all bad, blah, 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 bad, 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 bad. But if you look at an upward spiral where I start doing good things, other good things happen, and then it just leads up to more and more and more good things and money, right? So don't do the downward spiral. That's bad. Do an upward spiral where you start marketing more, which will lead you more leads, more leads, more appointments, more offers, more offers, more buyers, more deals, all this stuff. And the one thing that's kind of confusing on here is more offers actually equal more buyers because you lock up more contracts, more properties under contract. It actually leads to more success because when you lock up more deals under contract, you can actually bring that as leverage to find more buyers. And still a big, get the deal first and then find the buyer. Um, I know a lot of people say the buyer, it's not gonna, it's not gonna change everything. And it's still a way you can do deals. It's not going to change anything, but I would probably still find the uh, deal. For Next part here is a very important one. And this one I've been preaching for a very long time. Stop wasting. Okay. I think a lot of people watching this, they like to waste. And I'm not calling them bad people or anything like that. But a lot of you guys are spending your time on things that are not producing. And I, I have a huge mantra of when you don't have a lot of time out here, you're going to have to spend your time doing high income producing activities. Okay. Income producing. If I'm not, if this isn't producing income, it's not going to be good for you, right? And one of the least income producing activities you can do is act like you're producing income, but it's really not producing income at all. Actually doing bad lists, right? So what kind of lists are these? I see. I, I, I legit argue with y'all sometimes on these live streams and it actually drives me crazy, but I legit argue with you. Okay. Like we get beef going on uh, because we debate all day about Oh, I bought a list from Fiverr. I know you said not to buy it, Zach, but my results are terrible. And what do I do now? It's like, what? It's like, oh yeah. Um, you know, I hit my knee with a baseball bat and now I tore my ACL. Uh, what, how do I fix this act? Or like, how do I, how do I run a 5k tomorrow? It's like, what? You know, it just, people shoot themselves in, the own, in, in their own foot and then they're upset with me about why their foot hurts. It's just, it's your fault, Zach, my foot hurts. I'm like, what? You know, I tell everyone, do not do a fiber list. These are recycled lists. It, it's dirty what these VAs do. They literally will steal their competition. So their employers list, sell the list and the lists are like two years old and it just, it's terrible. Okay. The reason why, there's a reason why the lists are two, three cents. Like it's stupid. Okay. And heck, even look on, on uh, props, props, you really look at uh, how many leads you get down to a center record. That yeah, prop stream is a center record. So it's like you're buying fiber for two cents. It makes literally no sense at all, but whatever. It, it just, it, it drives me insane, but don't be using fiber lists. Okay. Next is high equity. And this is my beef with uh, a zackdata.com or a listra.com type list, right? Do not be pulling high equity leads as a beginner or part-time because high equity leads are a lot of volume. And this is not for the faint of heart. You're going to have to go through a lot of skip tracing. That's a lot of money, right? And a lot of calling and a lot of no's. My team can do it because it kind of encompasses a lot because all the tax delinquencies, all the IRS debt lien, like all of these crazy big lists, 
really are encompassed in the big wide net of high equity. The main issue here though is high equity can be a lot of things. And because it's so big, it's going to be so expensive without really doing VAs or a big system with it, it's going to get very difficult to make a lot of money with this. A lot of people are going to get distraught, right? It's not the best bang for your buck. Uh, so you want to get the best ROI on your time and on your money. Next is Facebook PPC online leads. You all already know I am not a big fan on Facebook and PPC leads. <sighs> I, I kind of go back here to ROI. If you're going to spend two or three, four grand to get a deal, at least do it through direct mail, which is a lot more consistent. And at least you get some brand building with that. Facebook P PPC leads, you get none of that. <sighs> it's the algorithm changes so much. There's so much you have to get on top. It just, it's a mess, right? Now I deliberately took SEO out of this. There are, I, I will say this hesitantly, there are SEO uh, experts, you know, that get into wholesaling and they, they actually can rank a website pretty good and they can get some deals. Now that's very, it's way more complicated and you have to know your stuff and the amount of time you got to put into really good, good edit versus hiring someone that costs a bunch of money. I would probably avoid it uh, for most beginners, but heck it's up to you. I, but I got no beef with SEO. You know, if you know your stuff, that's fine. Facebook PPC, I'm, I'm going to, I, I don't think it's, I don't think that's a good list. And honestly, I think you're going to waste your time with that, right? The last part here is figure out what's working and what isn't. And this is a huge one. And this is one, I think a lot of wholesalers, uh, they don't talk about too much, right? In your wholesaling real estate business, if you're finding that this list isn't working and you keep trying it over and over and over again, you think it's going to get you a, yield you a deal. Some markets, some lists just don't work. And in some markets, some lists are just terrible and they're not really as effective and they just don't work as well, right? And unfortunately, you're gonna have to realize this yourself and I can't tell you how it's gonna work or how great it's gonna be or not. But like if you're pulling the probates and you've done 2000 probates and you haven't got one deal, you should probably look back and see, hey, is it my script tracing? Is it my script? Is it the way I'm marketing to these sellers? Like, is it something I got that, that's doing this? Or like, what, what is it, right? And if you see other wholesalers, it's like, all right, I see this guy's doing really good texting the pre-foreclosure list. I'm gonna do that, right? Try it. And if you see nobody's doing the certain list, try it out. And if it's not working, I'm probably not gonna do it, right? I always equate it to fishing. And what I mean by this, if you're out fishing and you see that all this guy, find the guys that are catching the most fish and they're all go to these four spots. Well, why don't I go to that spot? There's plenty of fish to catch, right? And maybe, the, maybe those guys are catching 10 fish a day. Now they catch nine because I'm catching four. Hey, that could be 40 grand, right? So don't waste your time with bad lists and find the people that are doing really good. So uh, the next question here is how do I effectively do my time the right way, right? Really, th there's a lot of time be going around this, right? But let's kind of talk about part-time. So if you're doing 10, 20 hours less a week, right? How should you spend your time correctly? I think a decent schedule, and I'll pop this up for everyone just to see it, but like there's a lot of schedules you can have in wholesaling, right? There's absolutely a, a ton of them. I would say in wholesaling, really, let's do it 10. We can double this too if you really want, but like 10 to one, like this is like, if I really got to put a nitty gritty on this, right? Like 10 to one, I'd probably do a Saturday drying for dollars and reverse drying for dollars. Five to 10 PM on Mondays, I would probably just do a huge cold calling session because time's limited. Maybe I can find Monday to be my day where I just work my butt off. Two to 4 PM, I would probably push that to seller appointments and calls if I can. Now, I know that's not a lot, uh, but two to four on the weekends are probably the best one. So maybe 10 to one and then two to four on appointments, calls, follow-ups, things like that. And then double it or add extra days on top of that if you can do it. Probably more cold calling and list pulling days. But really, it's up to you which one you want to do. Um, I have personally found though that drawing for dollars and reverse drawing for dollars and then calling on a separate day and then pulling other lists and government leads that's going to be my favorite part. I, th I think for a lot of people out here, that's going to be the best part for you as a beginner to actually become as successful as you can. But ultimately, it's up to you which one you want to do, right? I think so many wholesalers out here, uh, they feel like they have to have this crazy, insane set schedule that's going to lead to the top results and the top uh, success in wholesaling. But uh, really... I have honestly found that whatever schedule works for you. So I get asked all the time, like Zach, what's the best time to start wholesaling, right? What is the best time uh, for me to actually go out here, talk to sellers, do all these crazy stuff, right? I personally found that the best time is whenever you can, right? So it's like, when's the best time to plant a tree? Best time to plant a tree was like 20 years ago. Now, the second best time was tomorrow, right? So it's like, when should I cold call? I mean, outside of don't cold call before 9 a.m. or after 8 p.m., but like anytime in between that works for you, do it. I, I don't think that's a bad cold calling time, right? So the next part is if you're doing part, part time, right? You can add the 20 hours a week if you want, really want on this. This is something, this is a handy chart we always put for the people, but like, how should I effectively like split up my time? I have found pretty much that a 
442 approach works the best. Or if you really want to get into an 884 approach, uh, this is kind of the ratio that I put on here, but like polling for at least four hours of list that could be drawing for dollars and reverse drawing for dollars marketing. You can even put reverse drawing for dollars and reverse drawing for dollars in the list polling and market session, uh, sections. So you can mix them up here. Uh, and also at least two to four hours of seller calls, follow-ups, appointments, whatever you want to call it, dealing with cash buyers or dispositions. Now I know this is pushing it pretty hard for a lot of things, but this is probably gonna be the best split for most beginners and most people starting out in wholesaling. So uh, that's personally what I've seen is probably the best split you can do. Now, if you wanna do like a part, part-time, you only got five hours, not a big fan of it. Everyone knows that. I, I feel like if you just did one hour less of sleep a day, you can at least get seven. And I think your dream is worth it, but that's just me. I'd probably say 10 to 12, uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday, drawing for dollars and reverse drawing for dollars. Cold call for two hours on government lists if you can, and the drawing for dollars leads, and then spend an hour on appointments or calls and cash buyers and things like that. Five hours is not a lot. That's a complete mess, but heck, um, it is possible, right? So so do I have a... Yeah, here, here's the other one. All right. So here's a big point I want to make for everybody, okay? you're Y'all are going to have to actually go out here and make an action plan and an action schedule. Stick to it. And I know everyone's rolling their eyes when they hear me say it, but I've said it a million times and I will keep saying it. You're going have to create an action plan and an action schedule. Create a plan of your attack and a plan of what you're going to do. Greatest people of all time all had plans. You look at every great conqueror, general, whatever out here, they all had plans. All great people, men and women, did not go out here and do great things without a plan. They did not go willy-nilly on a whim and do something. I mean, actually, some of them have, uh, but like for the for most people on a huge scale of mass change in the world, they all had plans. And if you're doing a mass financial change in your world, in your financial world, you're going to need to plan for it. And it's not going to automatically make you a better wholesaler, uh, but at least having a plan is going to give you a better chance of success. So let's break this down. Create a plan on your two budgets, a time budget and a money budget, and then a money, money schedule and a time schedule. So the, po the point of a plan is is are you most likely to stick to a diet if you make a diet plan out of what you're going to eat every day or just kind of wing it? You're more likely to do it when you have it planned out. Are you more likely to work out if you have a schedule 4 to 5 p.m. every day to go work out or when you willy-nilly work out when you want to? You're most likely to go to the gym more when you have a schedule. You're most likely to wholesale more if you have a schedule. You're most likely to market more if you had a schedule. You're most likely to make offers more if you had a schedule. You already know what the plan is. You're most likely to do deals if you have a schedule. That's why I'm telling everyone to make a schedule. And I've seen some things about this and it, it's something that is absolutely true, but do it every day, even if you don't want to, okay? You, heck, some days I get up, I go to the gym. I don't want to go to the gym. I don't do it happily. I do it miserably, but I still do it. I don't have to be happy to be at the gym, okay? I can be tired, but I do it. I might do it miserably, but I'm still going to do it and I'll do it well, but I might, I might not do it with a smile on my face, but I'm going to work out, okay? And I might not, I remember plenty of times I got up at 4.30 a.m. for bandit signs. I did not want to do bandit signs at 4.30 a.m., okay? I did it with no smile on my face. Guess what? I did it anyway. I went back to bed. I woke back up and then I started answering uh, signs and doing deals. And I was very glad I did it. Okay. You'll be glad your future self will thank your former self for what you did. So you do not have to be extremely happy to be doing hard work. Okay. I think that's one myth. All right. You can do it miserably, except cold calling, do that happily, but uh, do it every day. Even if you don't want to, eventually the results will follow. Show up, show up, show up, show up, show up every single day and give it your all. And that's for anything in life. And remember, this might be a mindset hack for a lot of people out here, but every no you get in wholesaling is actually closer to a yes. And that might seem like a contrarian idea, but it's true that statistically, I just look at statistics. If I roll a pair of dice and for me to get double fives to get 10, okay, I know that it's sort of a fallacy, but like if I keep rolling the dice enough, I'm going to hit 10. And I, uh, people do this like a roulette table. I think it's crazy, right? I went to Vegas, like I think two or three months ago. And, uh, I went all the crazy places. I, I didn't really gamble at all, but like, I just, I like watching people and I watched one guy he put 10 grand, uh, a bunch of people, they, they all put a huge stack on, uh, I think evens because the, the past three, uh, roulettes were all odds. And because I had that little screen, they're like, Oh my God, we gotta go all in on the evens. And they lost because it's a fallacy in, in roulette that like, because it hit even three or four times or odd three or four times, the next one has to be that. But statistically the next roll is going to be still be 50%. Now it's not always perfect. I mean, eventually if you do it over a long horizon, it will, but I'm rolling the dice. If I roll a six and then a seven and then an eight and then a two and then a three and then a four, 
it's not like, okay, there's a 90% chance it's going to be a 10 next time, right? There's still going to be a, um, yeah, there, there's still going to be a certain chance that it's going to hit uh, the 10 on it, right? And I think for a lot of wholesalers out here that they get really confused, right? And I, I think, what is it? One out of 12, right? You get it? 8%, right? I could be wrong on that, but I'm just doing this on that. There's, there's an 8% chance that you're actually going to go out here and roll it, which means pretty much if I roll it at least 12 times, there's a huge chance that I'm actually going to go out here and get double fives, which is 10, right? So if I want to go roll a 10, I'm going to have a one out of 12 chance usually to go out here and get that. And that's why how I call it a no, right? Now, usually if I roll 12, I'm going to get one. That means I might be rolling the dice. Hey, on the fourth one, I might get it. But maybe I have to roll 15 times to go actually out here and get uh, that 10, right? It just shifts. But if I do it for a year, if I do it 100 times a day for two years, it's going to come out to one out of 10. Some days going to be a little better than others. Some days going to be a little worse, right? It's, it's kind of a fallacy. But really, when you look at the no, every no, statistically, you're getting closer to a yes, right? And you just got to keep going. And every no is just basically every time you ask somebody if they want to sell the property, that's just you rolling the dice. Now, it's not one out of 12, you're going to get someone to say yes, right? Depends on the list, right? Right. But heck, if I can go talk to a hundred sellers on a drawing for dollars lead a day, that's just rolling the dice a bunch. And I know one out of 500 of those is going to be a hit little cool jackpot. It's pretty cool. And if I can actually go out here and play like a slot machine and I know every 500 cha-chings, it's going to be 20 grand and it costs me a penny to put it in. That's pretty good money. Or for every thousand bucks I put in, there's a very high chance I'm going to get a twenty, thirty thousand dollars deal. I'm just going to rank in that thing all day. That's the point, guys. Every no is closer to a yes. And so let's break down. I know it's been uh, a little bit, but this is my three-step system. So we're 32 minutes in uh, this, and now I'm finally giving you my three-step system. And so let's break down my three-step guide on actually how to wholesale real estate part-time to actually become successful. This isn't the complete step-by-step. -step. The complete wholesaling step-by-step -step is at freehealthsling.com. But like, there's really three steps to becoming successful in wholesaling real estate part-time. And really, most of them still are on the marketing side. Okay. I really don't want to complicate it. I don't want to make it seem any crazier than it needs to be. But really, there's three simple guides, steps, methods, whatever you want to call them, frameworks that will lead you to becoming successful in part-time. Step one is going to be finding where the deals are. That's number one. I think for most part-time wholesalers, you got to know where the deals are. So figure it out. Talk to your cash buyers. See where the cash buyers are buying. Okay. Number two, find the top fishing spots from your competition. Where's your competition finding their deals? Nobody else in wholesaling real estate talks about this because they don't want this information to get out here. This is the information they hide from you. Okay. I feel like I'm talking like um, I'm speaking about the Illuminati out here. You know, the secret societies, they're withholding all this information information from you. You know, like I, it's not like that, but it, it is a conspiracy that the gurus literally do not tell you this information because they tell you this information when you pay them five grand, but find the top fishing spots from your competition. From somebody that runs a seven figure wholesaling operation, this is what I do. And this is what the top wholesalers do. They find the top spots, the top companies figure out where the other top companies are getting their customers and all. This is what top business men and women do. The top corporations. Why are you any different? Okay. This is how business works. This is a, uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollar MBA guide I'm giving you guys for wholesaling, right? MBA, not MBA, but, uh, and then really like, this is a huge one, but the best Intel you can get, right. Is networking and Facebook groups. Guys and gals, why do you think that the United States has a CIA, a central intelligence agency? They have b -b billions of dollars all for information. Information is everything. Information can give you a huge change in for businesses, for the militaries, governments. Every, like Information is so important. It's vital. That's why we have swaths of military budgets just on intel and information. So you're thinking about this for a second. Where am I going to get this good intel? Networking in Facebook groups to find the top spots and where cash buyers are and where they're buying. Freelancing.com, we got you covered how to do that. Uh, but really, Intel is going to be super important. It's going to be everything, guys. Okay, find where the deals are at. Number two, pulling a list of sellers. Pretty simple, right? Pull a list and start pulling it, right? So pick a list and pull it. Pull it. So if you can pick a good list and pull it, you're good to go. Remember, a quick rule of thumb. The harder it is to pull a list, usually the less saturation in that list. That being said, that means if it's a lot more difficult to pull a list, there's going to be less wholesalers wholesaling there, which means they're most likely you're going to get a deal. There's just less people in the pond. All right. And this doesn't make the list worse or better, but there's just less wholesalers wholesaling in that list. So that makes it actually pretty good for me, right? This a huge example is like the probate list, the arrest record list, heck, even the bail bondsman list. 
These are lists a lot of wholesalers aren't pulling, but guess what? If you pull it, not a lot of wholesalers will be using it, right? One story I always uh, say, and I've said this a million times, is I had this obscure market, uh, not near me, but it was pretty close. It was this weird city um, that had the probates. And it, it took me a year to get the probate list. Me a year, all right? Like I, I'm good at pulling lists. It took me a year to get it. And I talked to the clerk lady and she said, you know, you are the second person to actually get this list. The other person is a probate attorney. I'm like, wow. So I'm the only person in real estate outside this probate attorney that has this list. It was amazing, right? And then I started doing YouTube and all, all this other stuff. And then everyone starts piling into that thing. And I wasn't the only one, but like for a period of at least a year, right? Before I had a thousand subscribers on YouTube, like no one was in that market doing that. There's a lot of wholesalers in that market, but they weren't, I was the only person doing probates. And that's obviously a con of having a YouTube channel, but hey, it helps the people out, you know, be it's better for the good. But like, I was the only person pulling that probate list. It was money, right? Like just imagine that. Now I'm not saying in your market, that's probably going to be the case, but just heck, I tried it out, right? Here's a huge one and a big lesson y'all got to learn too. But the more expensive it is to pull a list, the more money you drop into your marketing it doesn't mean it's going to be better. It's not going to mean you're going to make more money. It's not going to be that you're just going to have better results, right? And this is for everything, right? I, I just think so many wholesalers think that if I drop more money in my marketing, it's automatically going to make me better, right? It can, right? Like, honestly, it's not going to be the end of the world, right? Like, it's not going to be worse, right? But like, money's not everything. And it's your attitude, how you talk to sellers, your acquisition skills, your cash buyer skills, your people skills, your talking skills, right? It's a lot of other things around there. Um, the more expensive it is to, call, to pull a list does not make it mean it's better. And I want people to understand that, right? Then step three, this is just relentlessly marketing to sellers, okay? Relentlessly market. And I know everyone on YouTube, every other guru, everyone or whatever, schmuru, you know, the guru's auntie, uncle have been telling you this. Everyone's been saying this, right? Oh my gosh, do this, do this, blah, 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 blah. All right, guys, marketing's still king. And now I, I've said this a couple of ways and I've said this a billion uh, uh, different ways in and out, but the concept's the same. It is more important to find cash buyers than it was a year ago, but it's still a 70-30 split. And the 70 is the marketing. The marketing is still king. A lot of you guys out here are doing 70, 30, 70 cash buyer, 30 deal. No, it is not at that point. And it, I will tell you if it gets to a point. It is not at that point. And for probably the next two years, if real estate gets, if if the real estate's declining at the way it has been for the last four months, for the next two years, it was still wanting to meet at that rate, okay? We're fine. Marketing is king. And we must relentlessly market to sellers. The ones that become successful part-time in wholesaling relentlessly market. More deals equals more leads. I kind of said this before, but it's true, right? The more you market, the more leads you get. Less marketing, less leads. Pretty shocking. The less conversations, the less SMS text blasts I do. The less I market, the less leads I'm going to get. More leads equal to more offers equal to more deals. Just, hey, if I take more three-pointers, I'm going to make more three-pointers, right? My percentage doesn't matter, right? But like the more threes I pay, I make, the more deals I'm going to get. Like just statistically, right? And I might be a terrible shooter, but I'm just going to go in, right? The less leads you have, the less offers you make and the less deals. I get so many KPIs. I get so many people coming to me and saying, Zach, I've done everything you said. I market like crazy. I, I, I did all these. I remember I got one person that said, I had 30 leads and 30 appointments and I got no deals and your stuff sucks. You don't know what you're talking about, Zach. You're the worst in the world, right? I literally just asked one question. I asked everybody one question. How many offers did you make? And if your number is zero, then you don't deserve any deals. You don't deserve deals unless you make offers. Offers is the KPI for 2023. I don't care how many calls I made. I don't care. The more calls you make actually leads you to more leads, which leave you to more offers. Offers is going to be the most important KPI because the amount of offers you're making is going to tell me how many leads you're getting and how many marketing you're doing. And really, if you're getting no deals, what's even the point of cash buyers? If you got no leads and deals coming in, the important KPI right now is offers. Make offers, guys and gals. That'll lead you to your success for part-time wholesaling. And that's the point I want to tell everybody today. More offers, more leads, more deals, more money. And that's more flexing on these gurus. So guys, that is me giving you my part-time wholesaling guide. Guys, if you got any value from this video, let me know. Make sure you guys go to freewholesaling.com, my free real estate wholesaling course, where I teach wholesaling real estate absolutely for free. And everything I said in there, like the nitty gritty type like instruction is at freewholesaling.com. And that's where it's at.